some people call wild spring onion, wild leek. Mountain leek, they're called ransoms in England. It's not widely available, they don't grow everywhere. They're special because they only come around once a year. You get an onion 365 days a year, these just don't come around a lot and they're not farmed and there's a scarcity element to them that creates that demand. It creates buzz around the restaurants for like three weeks. It's like, who's got them? Who's featuring them? It's here for three weeks and you'll see it next year. My name is Dan and I forage for ramps. We're on private property outside Philadelphia. We can't disclose where we are because there's issues with people coming to this area and not checking with the landowner to make sure that it's okay. We have permission, we know the landowner, so it's kind of a little bit of a special situation with us. Very competitive. When something comes around that's special, everyone wants to get their hands on it. You're gonna pay X amount of money all year round for a scallion because you can get it all the time. The demand and the supply meet like this. When the supply is in shortage because it's only a three week season for ramps, and the demand goes high because people want to eat it because it's only three weeks. Also, it's like this boutique -y, cool, hipster food that people want to eat. You're just going to get this price gouge. This patch is probably between 70 and 90 pounds, and it's probably worth over $1,000. I deal with ramp pirates, I would say. 12 days of like really picking. I, every year it's like five people I kick, kick out. Yesterday I just kicked two people off of the property that I work for. They come onto the property and claim they don't see the no trespassing signs and then walk on and sometimes get away with it, but most of the time they don't. You have to do it sustainably. What a lot of guys will do is they'll just pull, they'll just dig the soil down and pull the whole bulb up. When you do that, it's never gonna grow back. You know, you're screwing up the ecosystem for it. If you're just gonna pillage everything and uproot everything, it's not gonna come back. And then eventually you're just not even gonna have them anymore. We're about 10 to 15 miles outside the city limits. Some indicators I look for is the tree type. We're looking for beech trees. We're looking for maple. We're looking for birch. We're also looking at the ground. We're looking for a trout lily. And then we're looking for May apples, which uh, sprout around the same time. And if you find those, it's pretty good indicator that ramps are close by or that at least the conditions are good for ramps. All right, so this is how you want to sustainably harvest a ramp. 45 degree angle, about a quarter inch into the soil. Take it out, pack the soil back in just so you kind of maintain that environment for him. I worked in the restaurant business for 15 years, so I know a lot of chefs, I know a lot of restaurant owners, and the connections are pretty simple. Hey, what's up? Does your chef want ramps? And the answer is always yes. If one of like my favorite like spring vegetables, I know it's like a big, everybody like loves them and everything, but I mean, they're, some things are really, really good for a reason. That's definitely one of them. Dan picks them right, doesn't take the bulbs out, so they're able to like come back year after year after year. Like I will buy ramps that have bulbs on the bottom, I won't do it. The fact that they are around for so such a short amount of time for me is pretty special because it forces us to really like respect the ingredient. Someone has to work really, really hard to go out, find them, pick them, and maintain like, you know, the respect of the actual physical plant. Too often we like turn food into a commodity. You know, we just let them get, you know, grown into huge massive fields and we don't really necessarily kind of understand like how much it really takes. Um, you know, it's a true gift that mother nature gives to us every year, which is really, really great. So we like to harness the, that time frame that we can use them. The ones we picked today we'll bring to my buddy's sausage shop and he's gonna make sausage with them. So these are ramps. Um, I got them from Dan Ang. These came in on Saturday. These are gonna get ground in with the pork. Then we also have a puree made of ramps. Ramps are super floral onions because you're not getting like the white bits. You're like at the bottom like we're normally used to doing. It's all leaf. It's like an onion herb almost. This sausage will do until we can't get them anymore. So that might be three weeks, it could be five weeks. We're buying like between 13 and like 20 pounds a week right now. This sausage just has the raw ramps, ramp puree, salt, and some smoked paprika that we make here. We're 
like 90% local. Everyone buys chicken in a packet, but have you ever like seen a chicken on a farm? I think it's important to know like, hey, when it gets to your plate at the fancy restaurant, like someone had to walk around in the woods, someone had to pull that thing out of the ground. You know, it's really important to connect to that stuff because if you don't, what is there to appreciate anymore? You can appreciate the food on the plate, but the journey that it takes to get there is the more interesting part of the food in my opinion. For more information about Rayups, foraging, and featured restaurants, check out our links below.